Today I'm going to be brewing a beer that has presidential approval. Hi, my name's Daryl and I am a home brewer in the UK and on this channel I show you my experiences of brewing beer. So with us being deep into autumn and winter encroaching, I thought it was time to brew something dark and so I went for a honey porter. Now according to those experts at the BJCP who uh, come up with the guidelines for judging beer, they reckon that a porter is a moderate strength brown beer with restrained roasty character and bitterness. It may have a range of roasted flavours, generally without burnt qualities and often it has a chocolate caramel multi profile. Now you might be asking what is the difference between between a porter and a stout and that is up to you <laughs> really there is really no difference although I may be offending the Irish here and at the end of the day the BJCP are only talking about judging guidelines so you can call it what you want so long as it's decent beer it doesn't really matter so in this recipe I'm going to be doing my own twist on a recipe that the White House released back in 2012 when Barack Obama was um, in charge he uh, encouraged his chefs to start brewing beer in the White House so the main difference between my ingredients and Barack Obama's is that I won't be using honey that was uh, produced at the White House. I also want to take this as an opportunity to try out doing a porter with a 13 minute boil. Worth a try and it saves me time, money on the gas as we're having trouble with gas at the moment in the world. So now you know all that, let's get brewing. Because my water's profile is almost identical to the London water profile, I didn't need to alter my tap water's chemistry as it's naturally great for darker beers. I stirred half a Camden tablet into the water and left it for 30 minutes so to allow the chlorine to leave the water. Then I started heating up the water to my target temperature of 72 degrees. Whilst this was going on, I measured my grains, which was 3 kilograms of pale marisotta as the base malt, along with 500 grams of crystal malt, 400 grams of Vienna malt, 200 grams of flaked oats, 200 grams of Carafa Special Free, and 100 grams of chocolate malt. The full recipe, as always, is in the description. Once the water was up to temp, I added my grain bag and grains, making sure to stir regularly so to avoid those cursed clumps. The grains reduced the water's temperature to my target mash temperature of 67 degrees C. I used a thick blanket to help avoid too much heat loss, I gave the grains a good stir after 30 minutes of the mash. After another 30 minutes I checked the grains temperature and again stirred it for 15 minutes so to get all the lovely sugars out of those grains. I then drained the grain bag and gave it a good squeeze and left it to drip for 15 minutes whilst I got the wort boiling. Whilst that bag was draining I measured out my hops, all of which were 25 gram additions of East Kent Goldings. One at first wart, one at 10 minutes, and one at flame out. I went for a first wart addition so to maximize bitterness while still having a short boil. I also used this time to prepare my honey as it began to solidify. The easiest way to sort honey out like this is to submerge the jar in boiling water. Once the wart was up to boiling, it was time to start that 30 minute boil. 15 minutes before the end of the boil, I prepared my copper cooling coil and put it into the kettle so to sanitize it. 10 minutes before the end, I added Irish moss to make the final beer clearer and yeast nutrients so to ensure a healthy fermentation. Five minutes before the end of the boil, I added the honey and stirred it in to avoid scorching. At the end of the hop stand, I then got the wort to 40 degrees Celsius and added it to the fermenter, allowing some of it to splash so to help oxidize it. In went my Kvike Voss yeast and after a bit of a shake, I put it onto a heat pad and left it to ferment for a week before bottling. So here is the honey porter, came out 4.5%, which I think is bang on for a beer like this. You can have quite a few of them, sat at a fire. So immediately get a big hit of, um, of that multi toasty, roastiness kind of smell. So let's give it a try. Bit of like a liquid Marmite vibe to it. Like if Marmite was made into a drink, which I think it has recently, <laughs> um, then 
this would be it. Yeah, I'm not getting any honeyness to it. The thing is though, you wouldn't really. There's a real allure to using honey in beer because you think, oh, it's gonna taste like honey. It's gonna be so sweet and delicious. But honey is almost completely fermentable. And so actually what happens is that you put the honey in and about 95% of it is sugar which gets converted into alcohol. And so you can actually end up with a thinner beer. It's not really providing any mouthfeel. There is a slight floralness that honey will give, but to be honest, it's so malty that it does make me think why a honey pot is a thing anyway. Uh, it just sounds nice. It sounds exciting. It's like, ooh, honey. But uh, I think the impact that the honey has on this beer is so minor. I mean, I suppose the experiment is to make the exact same porter, but one with honey one without honey. Maybe I'll do that one day on my long list of things that I suggest I should try out and then never have the time to. But yeah, I just I just don't know what the honey's doing. I added the flaked oats to try and avoid losing any mouthfeel, you know, try and thicken it up a bit to offset the honey. I suppose the thing is, is that in a pinch, if uh, you need a beer to be a bit stronger and you haven't got any malt, <laughs> then you could boost it a bit with honey but you're better off using malt. Feels like I could happily be enjoying some of these on Christmas day. The great thing with darker beers especially like very malt forward beers is that they tend to age really well so this should actually get better over the next few weeks as we uh, build up towards Christmas. Let me know do you think there is the difference between a stout and a porter or is it really just semantics? Do you really think that honey uh, is bringing anything to the table here or is it just showy to go oh there's honey in it? Check out one of my other videos and uh, thank you so much for watching uh, it means a lot. Cheers!